Hey guys, it's Jacob from Living Healthy Every Day. Let's get started. We're going to talk about cannabidiol, endocannabinoids, and THC. Something that's been kind of on the gray area of things that uh, hasn't been legal, so to say, but is kind of legal now. So let's get started. What is the endocannabinoid system? Well, it's something that was just discovered in the past couple years about how we have receptors of CB1 and CB2 all over our body and they can control so many things from pain and inflammation and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to go through the CBD uh, endocannabinoid system with you. So let's get started. Uh, some of the basics of it. So uh, cannabidiol, which is one of the 113 active cannabinoids in cannabis, uh, and let's talk about THC, which is another one, uh, the one that's very psychoactive, that makes you high, um, per se, if you want to say, uh, which is what people go for. Uh, it's the major uh, phytocannabinoid in cannabis. And uh, it's got a whole scope of applications we're going to go through with uh, antidepressant effects and neuroprotective effects and all, th all sorts of awesome things. So the, you got CB1 receptors, you got CB2 uh, receptors. Some of them have good uh, things to them. Some of them have uh, bad things to them. Some of the goods, like uh, you can suppress your mast cell uh, from activating uh, if you've got histamine intolerance or autism and things like that. Um, it can inhibit glutamate and GABA, so that can be good. Uh, decreasing prolactin, essentially raising your dopamine, that can be good. But I mean, so there's some bad things like decreasing bone density. We don't want that. We don't want to inhibit cyclic AMP, uh, raise cortisol. It's not some of those things aren't good. But let's get into the benefits. So promoting neurogenesis. So they've they've showed in studies that uh, it's able to promote uh, hippocampal neurogenesis by um, taking cannabidiol, which is pretty awesome, and THC exposure also increases BDNF, which is another awesome thing. And uh, with uh, Alzheimer's disease, it it's can help with Alzheimer's disease, uh, stopping the, uh, the buildup of uh, beta amyloid plaques, which is pretty pretty cool so it's uh, something to look into uh, if, if you got um, cognitive impairment and it uh, can protect the brain so they've uh, done rat studies where their uh, cannabidiol was actually uh, in, enhanced the uh, mitochondrial complex of, uh, of the rat brain and uh, it increased uh, vascular flow uh, without changing the blood pressure in the body which is pretty awesome um, it can help with anxiety. So some people who uh, have problems with anxiety, cannabidiol can really help that. Um, THC I would stay away from because that can induce schizophrenia-like symptoms in people. Um, now, pot is pretty cool. It can help with stress. Uh, if it's not raising your cortisol, it can help with stress because it can uh, modulate the HPA axis. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> when your stress is... Uh, down regulated uh, it's essentially when your your endocannabinoid system is uh, turned on so it can help people with depression uh, inflammatory properties is actually a potent uh, anti-inflammatory it's uh, with acting on mast cells it, it uh, stops cytokines certain cytokines from uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines from going into the body and causing inflammation uh, it's been shown to help the liver which is pretty neat uh, and the only problem about uh, cannabinoids has been shown to be immunosuppressive so if you've got um, any any kind of uh, immune condition that could be bad but if you've also got autoimmunity conditions that could be good because you want to you want to tone that down when it's been too high up uh, it's been shown to help with uh, glaucoma promote a healthy skeletal system uh, it can help with uh, some sleep problems like insomnia um, uh, especially uh, with uh, REM sleep and stage 4 sleep. It's been pretty good. And, uh, yeah, we talked about mast cells. It's, it's, it's technically an uh, antihistamine. Um, it can help with chronic pain. can help with uh, uh, dyskinesia, neuropathy. Um, people with uh, multiple sclerosis uh, can help with their neuropathy. It can reduce acne um, in some patients. Uh, it's quite good with uh, withdrawal, um, withdrawal from THC, withdrawal from uh, alcohol, opioids. Um, in rat studies, they uh, had uh, rats with heroin, and they self-administered less heroin when they had cannabidiol. Um, it can help with uh, 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 
prion accumulation in uh, mad cow disease um, in humans. So uh, if you're eating a lot of meat and you're susceptible to uh, eating some, uh, I don't think there's mad cow now, but uh, it, it can help with mad cow. Um, it can help with anorexia, ALS. Um, this is essentially with anorexia, it helps, uh, THC can help you eat more. Um, has some and, uh, antibacterial properties uh, with uh, MRSA, uh, streptococci, um, can help with atherosclerosis, arthritis. Uh, can now something interesting I found about cannabidiol is that it can help with uh, uh, asthma, <laughs> which you think smoking would make your asthma worse. Well, I guess if you take asthma, I mean if you take uh, cannabidiol, um, it can help better. Uh, Open up your lungs. Uh, it can help with uh, it can pro uh, activating CB1 and CB2 receptors uh, protected the lungs. So that's pretty awesome um, by decreasing certain serum cytokines and inter interleukin levels. Uh, uh, with the mast cells, it can help with uh, autism, which is is pretty awesome. And uh, their social behavior um, has anti nausea effects along with increasing appetite can help with a uh, bipolar disorder uh, in some people but THC I wouldn't uh, quite recommend with that because uh, it can induce like schizophrenic like symptoms and uh, it's a little more stimulatory uh, where cannabidiol is a little less uh, can help people with uh, IBS by decreasing gut motility especially cannabidiol uh, Crohn's and colitis has been shown to help some pa patients with uh, inflammatory conditions with that, it can help with migraines, uh, diabetes by increasing uh, insulin sensitivity and uh, lowering insulin resistance. Uh, essentially, uh, fasting insulin uh, was was lowered too, which is is pretty awesome. Um, it can uh, help the heart uh, in some ways, uh, benefiting the cardiovascular system. Uh, during chemo, it can protect the kidneys. Uh, it can also uh, be anti-epileptic and help people with seizures so um, they've been giving it to children with seizures uh, with positive results by um, lowering uh, glutamate essentially uh, it can help with uh, motion sickness motion sickness uh, a lot of people get motion sickness and uh, by activating the endocannabinoid system uh, it's shown to, to help rats uh, essentially uh, overcome motion sickness um, and can CBD, cannabidiol, uh, not THC, can help with uh, OCD-like symptoms. Um, and it's kind of interesting that it can also uh, prevent obesity. So if you're not taking THC, which is the one that makes you hungry, uh, cannabidiol can actually uh, decrease ghrelin and leptin levels, essentially making you more hungry um, <clears throat> and preventing obesity, essentially, along with the, uh, the metabolic factors of uh, insulin and... Uh, in uh, fasting insulin, yeah, uh, can help people with Parkinson's disease, uh, PTSD, along the same lines of uh, uh, allowing them to calm down and adapt to stress. Uh, now, cannabidiol, as opposed to THC, has some uh, antipsychotic effects. Um, so I wouldn't go for THC if you're, you've got a uh, kind of psychotic uh, symptoms. Uh, MS, we talked about MS in the the neuropathy, uh, can help with sickle cell anemia. Um, certain skin conditions like psoriasis, uh, because of its anti-inflammatory properties, uh, they, they showed with uh, rats um, that had uh, spinal cord lesions, uh, cannabidiol, when they administered that, it helped them uh, improve their functionality, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it can help with fibro, so if you got fibromyalgia, it can help with the pain there. Uh, it can protect the brain during Huntington's, which is pretty awesome, and help with uh, stroke and uh, traumatic brain injury right after that uh, can protect the neurons from actually uh, being hurt after stroke and uh, it's got many effects in cancer to a, a lot of different types of cancer bladder cancer brain cancer breast cancer colon cancer uh, endocrine system cancers uh, leukemia lung cancer melanoma prostate cancers uh, all shown uh, positive effects uh, and it's something we should definitely do more research in, um, then that's just cannabidiol itself. Uh, THC also has its own myriad of effects too. Um, so you've got the whole cannabinoid system with the uh, CB1 and CB2 
receptors um, and certain genes. And in my personal experience, uh, I use a vaporizer pen. Uh, actually, I don't have it here. It's in the other room, uh, which I use uh, for its antihistamine properties and its uh, non-psychoactive properties of stress management, which is pretty awesome. Um, and if I use the cream, it helps uh, with some pain after working out, and I like that. I think it's a great anti-inflammatory. Um, and if I have insomnia, I can use the oil or just smoke the uh, vaporizer, which is uh, pretty awesome. And there's some ways you can uh, activate the uh, endocannabinoid system or increase cannabinoids in your body. Um, I'll just go through that quickly with you. I've got a list here that we'll go through. Uh, stress reduction, exercise, a high-fat diet, uh, tea, CBD oil, essentially, uh, you can, or marijuana would work too. Um, Omega-6s, echinacea, nicotine, uh, glanamine, which kind of works the same way on uh, nicotine receptors uh, in the brain. Uh, fish oil, so DHA, essentially. Um, kava. Uh, caffeine, PA, just to name a few, EGCG. Um, you got some hormones that will uh, act on the endocannabinoid system like testosterone, uh, estradiol, uh, endorphins, DHT. Um, and there, there's also some drugs, the synthetic drugs that they use in the studies. Um, I don't think you can get, uh, get with that prescription. And of course, yeah, marijuana, THC, that, that's too, if you can go to a, 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 a dispensary if it's legal in your area. So there are some side effects, but I mean, uh, marijuana, there, I, there, I don't think there have been proven any uh, deaths from taking too much marijuana, even when you're eating it uh, or injecting it. I think the half-life is uh, pretty far up there for if it's injected. Um, uh, so it's been tolerated at doses of uh, uh, 1.5 grams per day orally or 30 milligrams uh, intravenously. And if you think of it intravenously, that's a hell of a lot. Um, and uh, there haven't been too many uh, downsides, except for the, the evidence uh, that uh, about the schizophrenic kind of uh, symptoms that you can get from THC. And uh, if, if we uh, look at THC in combination with CBD, CBD enhances uh, THC in the body. And actually, something I was uh, just listening to before, um, how alcohol... Uh, and THC in the body work. So THC actually enhances alcohol in the body. Um, I was watching a uh, ASAP Science episode talking about alcohol. I'll, I'll post that in the link below, uh, in the description below, and you can you can watch that. And if you want to learn more about uh, the places where to get cannabidiol um, legally, if it's legal in your state, and uh, all the other benefits that we didn't cover, because I've got 49 plus benefits of the endocannabinoid system. Uh, you're welcome to read that and some of the history and look at some of the awesome pictures there too. So, and uh, see uh, more of my experience. So thanks guys for watching this. I hope you learned some stuff about this uh, whole system we have in our body that no one ever really talks about uh, in a scientific manner. Um, so. That's the endocannabinoid system. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, give it a subscribe to the channel and uh, be ready for more videos like this and stay beautiful.